everyone. Welcome back. I'm Mr. R, and this is the Rondinelli Project. Today, session four of the fish replica creation. We're doing a black crappy replica. I'm going to break this down into two parts. Part one, up into the mold, and then I'll do part two, breaking the mold and uh, working with the fins and getting everything ready for painting. So stay tuned, and we're going to check this out. It's pretty cool. Once your molds are prepared, you're ready to wax them. The purpose of the wax is to be able to separate the mold and separate the body of the fish from the mold. That's the whole purpose of the wax. And it generally requires the entire mold to be coated like you see here. So I'm taking some wax and a brush I'm working it in on the entire mold, both side A and side B. You want to be able to do that completely. The caudal fin, the dorsal fin, the body, your markers, everything. That's the first phase. I'm going to speed this up. And you need to do both part A and part B, both sides of the mold. Once your waxing is complete, set it aside to dry. Once the wax is completely dry, you have to buff that first coat off. And that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna take the mold, take an old toothbrush. I have quite a few toothbrushes that I use. I switch through different toothbrushes because so, the wax will build up on the toothbrush. And what I'm gonna do is you're gonna buff it till it has kind of a shine to it. And this is a two-step process. You're gonna Buff both sides of the mold, part A and part B, and then we're gonna actually add a second coat. Sometimes, depending on the fish in the, in the complexity of the mold, you might even need to add three coats, but generally two coats will do it. Once you're happy with the buffing process of the first coat of wax, you add the second coat of wax. So you're gonna to wanna to take your side A and side B and reapply the wax again. I'll speed this up. It's the exact same process as the first coat of wax, but it's important that I show you this because it might seem like, why am I spending so much time with this? But when it comes to separating the mold, once you pour your cast, it's very important. It makes separating the mold much easier. Then you move into the second buffing. Once again, every time you put on a coat of wax and it dries, you have to buff it off. That gets it good and shiny and smooth. It helps the mold release when it comes time to separate the two halves. When it comes to casting your fish, in previous sessions, we've just taken a paintbrush and painted on PVA, but when you have your actual mold and you're getting ready to cast, I highly recommend that you airbrush your PVA. You don't have to, but it will really help the separation process if you get a light, even coat. And that's why I'm using my airbrush here. I'm gonna airbrush the entire mold. I'm gonna focus, obviously, on the fish itself the dorsal fin, the tail, the anal fin, the body, all of that, but you have to apply your PVA to the entire mold. And I'm gonna do this with both halves. So we'll speed this up. I know it's like watching paint dry, but it's important. This is the final step before we actually do our cast. And I have seen nightmares of molds that can't be separated. And you do all this work and then you destroy it because you didn't take the time to make sure that you airbrush both your halves with PVA. 
Once the PVA is completely dry, you move on to your gel coat and I use white. This is what you paint. This is what everybody sees. It's very important that you do a very good job here so that you get a good cast. This is what creates the detail. I'm now adding my MEKP. This is what causes the gel coat to set. Gel coat requires two drops per one tenth ounce instead of one drop for fiberglass resin. So eight ounces equals 16 drops. I might add too that gel coat, for whatever the reason, has terrible fumes. So I really recommend wearing your respirator when working with gel coat. Now it's really important to apply the gel coat, the white gel coat, only to the body of the fish. Don't get any on the fins, not on the dorsal fin, the tail, or the anal fin, because if you do, it's gonna make them completely white, and the fins are trans, they're more translucent, okay? Uh, light needs to show through, some are crystal clear, it just depends. This particular fiberglass resin that I use for the fins gives a nice natural look to the fins. So you don't want to get any of the gel coat on the fins itself. If you do, just take a little bit of acetone and clean it off. I did right there uh, get a little bit on the fin, I'm going to clean that off, it's not a big deal. But you want to keep it strictly to the body. And you want to do both sides. You don't want to put on too thick. Once it's applied, you want to get all the way up the sides to where the seam is. And that's important. Once that's all done, you set those aside to dry. It's very important to let the gel coat completely dry in the mold. Depending on the humidity, it might take a little while for the gel coat to dry, but let it completely dry. I'm going to move on to the next step. I'm going to take our fiberglass matting. This is what matte looks like. It's just kind of like material, but it's fiberglass. And I'm going to create a pattern by cutting out a piece of the matte. Now, I want to explain this because this wasn't explained to me very well when I was learning how to do this. I used to think that you had to fill the entire mold up with fiberglass resin, which was a huge mistake. Number one, you're wasting material and you're going to create an enormous amount of heat when the fiberglass sets. So you don't want to do that. And there wasn't any real clear instructions on when I was trying to learn how to do this on how, and how it was done. I was teaching myself. I didn't have anybody to tell me really how to do this, so it was trial and error. I came up with this idea of, and I, it's not necessarily original, it's just what I do. I take a piece of clear plastic and I trace out the general shape of the fish body, a little smaller, and then I cut this out to create a pattern. Once that pattern is created, and you really only need to create one pattern, because it's the same as the opposite side, you just flip it over, so you don't have to make two patterns. I'm going to take it and lay that down on my fiberglass mat and I'm going to take a marker and I'm going to just roughly sh trace over the shape of the body onto the matting. And then I'm going to cut that matting out. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to take that pattern and I want to lay that in the mold. This is what creates your strength. You don't have to fill the whole mold with fiberglass uh, resin, the liquid. You see what I'm doing here? This creates strength without wasting resin. And that will melt when I add a little bit of fiberglass resin, as you're going to see in just a moment. Okay, I've already added my MEKP and I've mixed this up and it's ready to go. So we'll take the resin and we're going to take a brush and I'm going to dab this inside the mold itself and this is going to melt that fiberglass mat and it's going to create the strength needed. It's going to adhere itself right to the inside of the white gel coat and you want to work this into the fiberglass mat very well. It will melt but you don't want to get the fiberglass resin up into the fins yet. This is just adding strength to your mold so that you don't have to waste so much liquid resin. I'm gonna do this to both halves. 
I'm also going to add a block of wood in order to have a way to attach our fish to the design that we're going to use to display it once it's all done. I'll speed this up. You can see, don't worry about that black. That's just the magic marker. It sometimes bleeds when the resin hits it. Just don't get any of that on the fins. Now, here's where I'm adding the mounting board, block of wood. You want to make sure that the two halves fit together. It doesn't interfere with the halves fitting together. But the uh, fiberglass resin acts like a glue, and it will just, once that sets, you're not going to move that. So you have a way to mount this for display once you're all done. You're now ready to actually cast the fish. You're going to need a lot of clamps to hold the mold together. You're going to need your two halves ready to go. And this is the process. For this particular size fish, one ounce of fiberglass will do the job. Now, I'm going to add something to this. This is called chop. This is just taking fiberglass matting and cutting up into tiny little pieces and adding it to the fiberglass. No MEKP has been added yet. I'm going to mix this all up and it makes it very strong. It thickens it a little bit, but it adds these fibers within the fiberglass. And this is what I'm going to add to the fins, the dorsal fin, the anal fin, and the caudal fin, the tail. I want to mix this up really well. I'm going to mix it right here. You can see it'll start to melt and it'll get all gooey not like peanut butter, but you'll see all the strands in there. It thickens right up and you can see the strands. That's the first pour we're gonna do. Now, polymer fume silica. It's a thickening filler for the seam. If you're gonna use this stuff, you gotta wear a respirator because it is dangerous. It's almost like powderized glass, it's silica and it's very light, it can float in the wind. You do not want to get any of this in your lungs. Bad stuff, bad mojo there. So what it does is it turns your fiberglass resin almost into uh, like a soft peanut butter. And the reason for that is you want to be able to have something thick that will stay on the seams where the two molds go together. When I first started doing this, I didn't understand that and the fiberglass would run back down inside of the body and I wouldn't get a clean seam or I'd end up with holes in the seam and then I'd have to patch them with epoxy and it was just more headache. So by adding the, the, the fused silica, this powder almost like light snow is what it looks like, what it does is it thickens this up so that the fiberglass resin will actually stick to what you put it on. It also helps too, if you have any extra to put it on the fins as well. It just adds strength, but it keeps the fiberglass from flowing so much. When it gets to where it'll stick to the side of your paper cup, you're ready to go. So you have these two pores, one for the fins and one for the seam. Now, once you add your MEKP, the catalyst will begin and it will start to set. So fiberglass gives you a little bit of working time, but like I said, you don't have the Christmas. So you gotta be ready to go and you gotta know where you're putting things. So once I mix this all up, I'm gonna add this fiberglass directly to the fins themselves. And you wanna be liberal with it. And you wanna make sure that the chop stays on the fins. You're gonna notice it's a lot thicker. It tends to stay in one place. I mean, it's gonna ooze what you want it to do. This is the messy part. But I'm gonna put it on the caudal fin, the anal fin, and the dorsal fin, and I'm gonna do it on both halves. Once I have this all placed, can you see how I work that around? I'm also making sure that it, it, the fins are very well covered. Now I'm gonna add the thickened fiberglass that I added the silica to. I only needed about a half uh, an ounce, so five drops will do it. Mix it up really well, and now I'm going to add it to the seam itself. Make sure you get it all the way around the seam, and you can see it stays there. It's like peanut butter. That's what you want. 
Now, since COVID, all this stuff has gotten kind of expensive unnecessarily. They've raised the prices on everything like the rest of the world. But so not wasting material is really important. The extra that I have, I'm just putting it where I think it needs to be thickened up because you go to all this trouble, you don't want to break the fins when you take the mold apart because then you have to start all over again. All right, so I put the two halves together. Make sure they fit. And this is going to be messy, so you want to have some paper here. And I use, here's my clamps, if I could hold on to one. I'm going to lightly clamp this at first until I get this to stand on its own. And these are like the C clamps. You pick these up at Walmart. They're not very expensive. You don't need real expensive clamps. You don't want real expensive clamps because they're going to get covered in fiberglass over time. And these are easier to clean. So I'll start with four clamps. You want to snug them up. Once that's done, then I add my spring clamps. Now we're ready to go. I'm going to check it, flip it over, take a look, tighten them up. Everything seems to be in place. Nothing's holding anything up. And that fiberglass resin is setting in there. It's going to produce heat. So I'm adding my clamps all the way around to give it fairly equal pressure. And, and the fiberglass is going to ooze out in different places. But you don't want to ooze too much out because you're losing material and you're making your fins too thin and then they'll break. And it would be a disaster to spend all this time and effort and you don't know what you're going to get till you open that mold. So make sure you stop back to check out part two because we're going to open this mold and see what we get. I don't even know what we're going to get. And you could get this far and the whole thing is destroyed. Let's hope that's not the case. There you have it. That's part one. Make sure you come back. We'll see you on the flip side for part two, finishing up the replica of the Black Crappy. And then we will move into session five, painting. That's a whole nother ball game. Until next time, I'm Mr. R, and this is The Rondinelli Project, and we gone.